which really I thought was really inspirational, and I wanted to do something like how he presented his last lecture, and I took a different spin on it, and I decided to do how I didn't achieve my childhood dreams. So today, I will talk about all the dreams I had as a child and why I didn't achieve them, what happened instead, and why that changed me, and why it was better to not achieve my dreams, how not achieving my dreams brought me to where I am today, and ways I live my life now. So my unachieved childhood dreams. I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. Um, I had this board in my house, my mom still has it, that says when I was three years old, I told my preschool teacher, after all my friends said they were gonna be teachers and ballerinas, went up to her and I said, I'm gonna be a neurosurgeon. Um, that was exactly what I planned on doing and I was secure about that for so long. I also started playing basketball when I was in kindergarten. Uh, this is tall, like very, very small. Played basketball, thought I was so good, everyone else was my size. I was convinced I was going to the WNBA. And then I was convinced that I would be a Disney princess at some point in my life. I was 100% certain that I would do all of these three things at the exact same time. But what happened instead, I was five years old and I was eating an ice pop. I got the ice pop stuck in my tongue, took it off, was bleeding everywhere, woke up in the ER because I was terrified of blood. Uh, I could not smell it, I can't look at it, passed out every single time, so my dream of being a neurosurgeon, gone. I ended up growing up, became a little bit taller. Um, everyone else, no, sorry, everyone else became a little bit taller. I stayed small, dreamed of going into the WNBA, gone. I also found out that you cannot be a princess if you are under five foot two, so also gone. And because I didn't know what to do anymore, I started to run. Uh, that's the only reason I started to run, didn't know what else to do. But why did this happen instead? So the real reason I started to run, when I was in high school, my freshman year of high school, I had an eating disorder. It was really bad and I ruined my relationship with my mom for a really long time. We just didn't get along. And the only reason I'm saying this, this isn't the focal point of this presentation, the only reason I'm saying this is because everything good happened because of this. So how did not achieving my childhood dreams and what happened instead brought me to where I am today? The lessons learned, the way I live my life now. So the cliche message, but true, don't ever be embarrassed of your past. It makes you who you are today. I, people always ask me, Sierra, why did you start to run? Why did you start to do this? Why did you start to do that? And I have no problem telling them about anything bad that happened. I have no problem telling them about anything in general. Uh, I'm not embarrassed of it. And I think that's, it took a long time for me to get to that and realize that you can't be embarrassed of it. It's just, you know, everyone else has gone through bad things and you just have to own up to it. And if you're that type of person, then other people will open up to you instead also. I also learned that you have to show everyone how grateful you are for them. My best friend, as I mentioned in my signature story, uh, he's been my best friend since we were so young. He is my other half and every single day, I always, not every day, but most of the time, I always let him know, I'm really grateful for you, you're great. Everything you do for me is great and vice versa. It's just how you have to be. Same with my little sister. Me and her are really, really close and she's my sister. I don't need to tell her I love her every day. But I do because I am grateful for her. If I wasn't for her, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have my best friend also. So every single day you need to show people how grateful you are. And that's just something I've learned. Before I was sick, before I started doing everything, I never really knew how important it was to really like thank the people that are with you through everything. And the only reason I learned that is because I lost a lot of people. So it's really important to reinforce that over and over. The people that just stay with you, that you're really grateful for them. Speaker, don't panic. Great voice, great energy. You're saying so a lot, and you're looking at slides when there's no need to. All right, so stay with your audience until it's time to keep it slide and capture the next point. Okay. Number three, find a hobby even if you're really, really bad at it. When I started to run, I was absolutely terrible. I would run maybe a quarter mile, and it would take me ten minutes, and I'd be dead. And then I'd be like, all right, I ran for the day. This is great. It's all over. I was really horrible, I really hated it, um, but I kept, kept with it because one of my really good friends was one of the best runners I've ever met in my life. Right now she's actually running at Wisconsin, she's the best runner for the 5K in the world right now. Um, she's training for the Olympics and I run with her all the time still, she'll be three miles ahead of me and I'll be behind her. So right now, I mean, I guess I'm still really, really bad at my hobby compared to her, but I'm okay with it. I love it, it's what I do, I really enjoy it. Um, I'll never, you know, give that up, hopefully. So I've also learned that bad days only last 24 hours. In high school, it was 
really, 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 really hard for me to realize that if you, you know, you feel bad one day, you don't have to feel bad the next day. And it's, that's something like, it's easy to say, it's easy to think that, but to really learn that and to really practice that is really, really difficult. And so it's really important to remember, like you are the one that makes the choice of, are you going to leave it in the past, those bad feelings, are you gonna forget about them for the next, the next day, or are you gonna carry them over and still feel bad? There's, that's your choice, no one else is dictating that. And that being said, don't let someone live rent free in your head. Holding a grudge is the absolute worst thing you could ever do. I held grudges about these, this girl from high school. I held a grudge for her for so long, and I learned after going to college and the first year of college, didn't think about her, didn't look at her, I was so happy to see how bad karma got her because it was just great to not hold a grudge and then to just look around and see, you know, you really, you didn't let this person bother you anymore, and then it, things just worked out in your favor. <laughs> and finally, going back to how my mom and I, we had a really bad relationship for a really long time. <clears throat> Me and her really started getting really close again my uh, freshman year of college. And I never really experienced a lot with my mom. I never really had the experience of having like someone constantly post on Facebook about you. I never really had the experience of, you know, everyone talked about, like, my mom called me a hundred times. I didn't know what they were talking about. So I started getting close to my mom, and I started to you know, sort of realize how people see. My mom would call me like three times a night, and I'd be like, what is this? Like, what? Is, this, is this normal? And all my friends were like, only three times? Really? And so I learned, and this is something that I, I really value, and you probably all don't, but let your mom tag you in embarrassing pictures on Facebook. That is, I love it now. Um, it is. It means a lot to me. I mean, it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing, and I always try to say, Mom, you know, maybe don't post that picture. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, especially for my birthday. She posted a huge picture of me, like, in this giant sombrero, and she posted, like, six different photos of that, and was like, Happy birthday, Sierra. Like, so happy you're 21, and I was humiliated, but I didn't say anything because it's my mom, you know? she's She means well, and I hear so many people always say, like, my mom, I had to attack this post my mom put of me, and I'm always like, don't do that. You know, she she loves it. She loves you. And you can see my mom wrote, ha ha, I love her. And it's just, it's just <laughs> like, this is not a horrible picture. This is so bad. <laughs> and it's just, you know, your mom means well. She loves you. She wants you to really, you know, do well. And she she's proud of you, even if your picture's horrible. So I just want to finish by saying that I've learned through my life that it's not important to like worry about what dreams you have or even try to achieve the original dreams, whether you can or not. And it's also not about the lessons that you learned altogether. It's about every single thing that happened along that way, all the people you gained, all the people you lost, especially that's important. And it's really about like learning from what every single thing that happened, and you get to be the one that decides how it shapes you.